How are you guys doing? Doing good? All right. I heard a rumor that if you guys don't say anything, that's actually a good thing. Is that true? Yeah, see? <laughs> Silence. It's amazing. Uh, real quickly, we're nearing the end of the day, and I figured everybody could use a bit of a stretch. So if you guys would bear with me for a minute, I know some of you guys have laptops out, but if you got laptops, you can stay seated. Everybody else, up real quick. All right, raise your right arm. Now your left arm. Now your right arm. And do the hokey poke. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, you guys could sit down. I know what it's like to be in a chair all day long, and so I figured uh, we'd get you guys moving. Oh. <laughs> Who knew it was that easy? All right. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm Josh Brewer. I am the CEO and co-founder of a company called Abstract. And uh, I am here to chat with you guys today about version control and design systems. Uh, there we go. All right. Great teams ship great products. Now, this isn't always true, but the point here is that any great product is not the result of a single person or even a system put together by a handful of people. It comes out of a deep collaborative effort. Uh, and design happens to sit at a very interesting intersection when we talk about building digital products and digital experiences. Design interacts with and is uh, impacted by and influences most of the rest of the constituents in a business. So whether it's developers or product managers or marketers or copywriters or researchers, there's this really interesting place as a designer that you sit in this nexus where you spend a lot of time helping people see a future that doesn't exist yet and simultaneously getting uh, input from several other uh, parties to help shape and mold kind of the constraints around the process. Sometimes it feels like this. No, nope. oh God, I'm, I keep forgetting the silence is a good thing. <laughs> um, but it's okay because if it, it was easy, it probably wouldn't be worth it. And I bring this up because both building products and designing and building out a design system, uh, turns out there's a lot in common. And I know that uh, a number of folks have mentioned this throughout the day today, but if you envision your design system as a product uh, and that the customers that are it's serving are your actual you know, users that you're designing for, then consistent, clear communication is actually the most central piece of this kind of equation. It's the thing that'll keep a diverse set of people uh, moving towards a common goal. This group of people that's required to ship this product, whether it's at your actual product that you're putting out in the world or it's the design system that you're basically shipping to your company, uh, it's gonna need almost all the same parties. So whether you're shipping a product internally or externally, you're gonna have folks uh, giving you feedback on the technical implementation. You're gonna have people giving you uh, feedback on content strategy and copy. And you're gonna probably, if you're really lucky, have some researchers who are giving you actual real contact with the people who will be using your product and helping hopefully debunk some of your own myths or uh, validate or invalidate some of the assumptions that you've been working out of. Um, also, it turns out my speaker notes go off the screen and it doesn't scroll, so this is gonna be super entertaining as we go along. All right. Oh, hey, somebody scrolled for me. Yes, all right. You guys are awesome, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, product managers, executive stakeholders, uh, everybody has an opinion, it turns out, especially when it comes to design. And so you will have to take all of these diverse inputs and you're gonna have to be a facilitator. You're going to have to receive feedback, you're gonna have to, uh, in some cases, present your case, make the argument for certain decisions, certain directions, and the more data and more uh, kind of like research that you can bring to the table, the better those conversations tend to go. So where are we going with all this? Well, you're gonna want 
to build consensus around the principles by which you're, you're uh, designing. You're going to want to build consensus around the process, uh, what things you're actually going to be building, the component level kind of uh, features. Documentation, uh, this is really important both for customer facing and uh, internal company things is documentation for both the code output and how you should be using it, but also documentation for how the design should be applied. And this is something that uh, I think some really fantastic teams have done really well is go above and beyond to document and document and document every nook and cranny of the system so that anyone who comes in has a way and the means by which to engage with the system and use it appropriately. But at the end of the day, this is the million dollar question. How do we move faster? Uh, and, and this is about not just working harder or even going just faster, because you can go faster and screw all kinds of things up. Um, I personally don't subscribe to the move fast and break thing philosophy. I like the move fast and try not to break things philosophy, um, which usually ends up being working smarter. So one thing that I can tell you is the way that we work smarter is not by doing things like this. Have you ever heard of this? This is a legitimate, real thing. I have talked to co uh, a few different companies where they had to schedule design shifts so that they didn't get conflicted copies on the file that they were working on. I shit you not. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's noon, Gina. Time to uh, save and close that sketch file. I'm gonna open it up in T minus 30 seconds. If you don't close it, I'm gonna just open it anyways and then all hell will break loose, right? Like, how is this the state of the art? Honestly, WTF. And how many of you guys have done this before? You've gone into Slack and you're announcing, hello everyone, company, I would like you to know that I'm about to open the file. The file will be opened by me. Don't open it, please. But like, seriously, this is, this is like, people have their fingers crossed and this is actually, uh, you know, the faces and names have been changed to protect, uh, protect the innocent, but this is a legit, uh, I took it from a screenshot from a real team Slack. This is how we work faster and go faster, and this is the state of the art today. Uh, it doesn't seem like a big deal maybe to some folks because as designers, we're pretty adaptive folks. We kind of sort of will do whatever it takes to get the job done. However, if you stop and you take a couple steps back and you look at it, you'll begin to probably pick up the fact that like, this is insane. This is absolutely crazy that we would jump through these many hoops in order to be able to work on something together. I'm hard pressed to think of any other part of the organization that will do this. However, like I said, designers, pretty adaptive folks and we will get the job done, whatever it takes. So I want uh, anyone out there who was feeling bad for a hot minute for maybe potentially you know, operating like this, don't feel bad. Uh, it's actually a giant sign of a great designer is that willingness to do whatever needs to be done. But again, I'll ask the question, how can we move faster? How can we, uh, you know, in this day and age, getting your product out to market and actually serving your customer, customer and improving the experience week over week and month over month is actually business critical at this point. So, how do we move faster? Well, it's probably not by, you know, getting a bot that automates when I open the file or something like that. Uh, but we can look at our developer counterparts and we can see how they solve this problem. So it's fascinating if you look back, developers have been benefited from sophisticated version control tools for decades now. But designers and their tools have unfortunately been left behind. Koi Vin, who is currently a principal designer at uh, Adobe, said designers still use shockingly manual and even arcane methods of managing versions. And if you think about that, he's not wrong. We spend an inordinate amount of time duplicating files, coming up with really great naming conventions like 
new file, underscore final, underscore final, final, underscore Josh, underscore Tuesday, underscore 4.30 p.m., underscore what the fuck am I doing? Seriously. And then you realize that that's too long and no one's ever gonna actually read the end of it and so you delete the whole thing and start over again. Um, but if we want to move faster, seriously, uh, we've got to have better communication and collaboration between design and development, between product uh, and design, between all of the different components that go into doing what we do. And we need to get out of the dark ages and start working in a similar fashion. A uh, good friend of mine talked about this as parallel resistance, working in the same way at the same time. And Historically, design and development, I wouldn't say have been parallel. They maybe, maybe they're sidestepping, occasionally they're doing this. But um, we're in a really awesome time, honestly. Design tooling is exploding. We have more resources available to us than ever before. Uh, we have, I mean, if you look at what uh, the folks at Airbnb are doing, that is literally the future. And they're like pushing all of us towards it really rapidly. So thank you guys. Um, so, version control. The version control system is honestly, in my opinion, probably the fastest way for us to get out of the dark ages for design and really product development to move faster. You need to have all of the parties participating in a similar workflow and a similar process. Is there anyone in this audience that does not know what a version control system is? Don't be embarrassed, it's okay to raise your hand. Nope. All right. Awesome. Sweet. Somebody's honest. I love that. Um, that's really great because that means I can probably cut a bunch of slides out uh, or at least not read a big chunk about version control. But at the bottom, uh, bottom line is version, version control systems are a category of software tooling that allows uh, teams to manage changes over time. So traditionally, this has been for code. So you have a number of developers working on the same code base at the same time, and you need to figure out a way to let them work on the same stuff and bring that work together. So like I mentioned a few minutes ago, engineers have been enjoying this for the last few decades, whereas design has kind of been lingering in the dark ages, uh, that partly thanks to the tools that we've had at our disposal. I won't blame anyone, Adobe, but um, you know, the file formats that they chose to lock all of our design data up in actually ended up being kind of the shackles that kept design, uh, I think, from being able to really participate in some cutting edge tooling and technology. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, it really is uh, that, that kind of repository of knowledge that's been kind of slowly but surely added to over time. It's also uh, the, you know, the ability to uh, protect the work, the ability to make sure that human beings don't totally screw things up because we tend to do that occasionally. Um, sometimes it's, you know, a catastrophic failure, your computer or your server completely melts down. Uh, however, when you have a version control system, you often have redundancy baked into it and you have the ability to roll back and get back to work. So another one of the uh, features here is that it's collaborative by default. And this is one of the biggest paradigm shifts that I've experienced uh, in the last, I don't know, call it decade or so. But really, uh, in most of my career, wrote the front end of things that I designed. Uh, the last big chunk um, haven't really done that as much, but have spent a bunch of time working with teams to help them get out of this uh, mentality, which is moving from these are my files, these are my files in my folder, inside of my Dropbox, inside, you know, it's my, 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 me. Uh, instead of these are our files. And that paradigm shift when you work in a version controlled uh, workflow is that the files themselves become communal. They are collaborative by default because anyone can actually check it out. They can create their own branches, which are like a safe working space, and they can make changes and potentially propose those changes back in. And so it allows for um, kind of cultural implications. It shifts the burden, uh, or not even burden, but, but the paradigm and centricity from me to us. Um, I had a, a little phrase I used to say often, which was, we not me. And it's, it's that tiny shift that uh, puts it in perspective of collaboration first. 
So again, like I said, cultural implications are pretty profound. Version control is communication. Uh, the, the project itself is a, sa is a safe space and it's an organizing principle uh, for teams to you know, take on new initiatives. Potentially it's feature centric and sometimes it's platform centric, but it, it becomes a safe arena in which to do the work. Uh, concepts such as branches, which I know it's really funny. Every time I talk about branches, I immediately picture trees and you wonder how do trees have anything to do with version control? And it's a long story and I'm not going to bore you with it. But the bottom line is branches are your friend. It's your place and your space to do your work uh, with a way to bring it back together. Commits are these little moments in time where you've collected a, a chunk of work and you're able to kind of add a description of what changed and give context and meaning to the set of changes. I don't know about you guys, but so many times in my career, uh, you'll pick up a piece of work and you look at it and you have absolutely no clue how that person arrived at this, uh, this state. What were the decisions that went into it? What were the constraints? Um, did they have input from somebody else that caused them to go to this direction instead of a, another direction? Uh, there's no real way to pick up the context of other work. And the deeper implication of that is that each designer carries all of the knowledge of all of the design decisions and product decisions that they've made in their head. And the day that person walks out of that company, all of that knowledge leaves with them. So these are like, it might not seem like big things, but over time, this begins to kind of erode the ability to have confidence in the design process, confidence in the direction, um, and really to have a historical record of how we arrived where we are. The last concept in version control that's worth mentioning is merging. And I don't know about you guys, but the best analogy I have is, Outside of a version control system, the best way a designer can merge uh, any work is to open file one, open file two, create a third brand new blank file and start copy pasting. And ta-da, now I have a new merged document. The downside is you just lost all of the history and any bit of context that might have been in either of those two files. So version control allows that, it manages those uh, potential conflicts and gives a simple workflow for resolving it. But more importantly, Version control is transparency. That notion of making a commit, of doing your work and then describing the work itself and the context in which that work was done and the decisions were made is something that becomes publicly available. Why is this important? All of these uh, decisions and uh, notes effectively that you're leaving are attached to the file itself. Instead of being stuffed in a Google Doc or an email thread or a Slack channel or a threaded Slack uh, conversation or a JIRA ticket or God knows where else. Instead, all of that travels with the actual file itself. And then reviews. So designers are pretty uh, you know, comfortable and I think used to doing reviews. But when you have a version control system that has a review process uh, baked into it or, or on t set on top of it, it allows uh, other folks to have the opportunity to ask critical questions, evaluate how well the solution solves the problem at hand, uh, potentially assess any risks, especially technical. And one of the amazing pieces of this is that a lot of times this can be done asynchronously. Obviously, in person, I think, is always uh, a better way to go, but given the nature of our work and the fact that distributed teams are more and more and more common, um, our team is half distributed uh, at Abstract. If we didn't have a system like this, it would be almost impossible to get the kind of feedback and uh, a timely feedback, actually, that you need to be able to move forward and Aaron Sruggs, uh, who's the director of engineering over at Kickstarter, said this right here, transparency plus consensus is blamelessness. And there's something really beautiful about the consensus and transparency piece. So when you're working in the open, when you're actually sharing the design process and allowing other people to kind of effectively participate in it, or at least observe it, which for the record, most people have absolutely no idea how design is done. Because to date, it 
usually tends to be squirreled away in a file, in a folder somewhere. And, and the only way that people can access that is when it's presented to them. Instead of having a system that allows f people to come in and participate and evaluate as it's moving along. So I love this because at the end of the day, I would love for us to be in a position where we aren't looking for blame to be cast. We're not trying or fearful of having fingers pointed at us, but instead we are constantly in a conversation and with all of the different folks that we work with and, and the stakeholders in the process, being able to have an ongoing, honest conversation with feedback at the right time is how we are able to move faster together. All right. This one's super fun. So version control enables design to scale. So I'm gonna run through a handful of things. I think you guys get this pretty uh, clearly. So um, the branching, committing, and merging is a predictable workflow. There's no more conflicted copies, no accidental overwriting of a library file that totally ruins everyone's week. Uh, one place where stakeholders can follow along the, with the design process, leave feedback, um, where people can reference the latest work. How many times have you had to answer the question, is this the latest file? Yeah. Many, 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 many times. Um, even between designers, hey, uh, I took a screenshot of this thing because I can't remember, but who has the latest version of X, right? Um, instead, there's one place to go, one single source of truth for at least the visual representation. Um, there's an increased productivity of the team by uh, building and maintaining a design system. And if you're able to do that inside of a version controlled workflow, you should be able to connect that to the other systems and see kind of a synchronicity that starts happening between the visual expression and the actual coded uh, implementation of that system. We really want to increase transparency and feedback throughout the design and development process uh, because as was mentioned a few minutes ago, design is never done. Uh, we are in it all the way till it ships and gets to the customer and then we're still in it because we're going to learn from the customer and we're going to go right back to it. Um, and so the more that we can be in that process and having that conversation unfold throughout the life cycle, uh, the better it is for our customers, the better it is for our teams, and the better it is for the design itself. And then finally, uh, it increases more diverse input. So by having a centralized place where these things live and an observable process, you invite diverse inputs from people in parts of the company that may never have felt like they could have a voice or have anything to say about how the design process works or whether or not our buttons should actually be pink. You know, maybe somebody uh, happens to be colorblind and they notice that the contrast is so low with this awesome color that we've decided to go with and no one else caught it. So having these kind of places for this communal conversation is very, very valuable. I'm going to move real quickly. Uh, it was a little bit about abstract. It's a design uh, Workflow platform for modern design teams. It's one place to version, manage, and collaborate on your files. So instead of giving you guys a big deep dive on abstract, uh, what I wanted to do was actually talk about a couple of companies that have uh, used abstract and uh, in conjunction with the design system they've built. So the first one I want to talk about is Shopify. Uh, the folks at Shopify are pretty fantastic. Uh, they were super early uh, adopters of abstract when it was arguably not even alpha software. Um, so kudos to them for braving a lot of uh, releases with us. But they released their Polaris design system recently. And if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, I highly recommend it. It is an incredibly well-documented and well-designed uh, system. They have this notion of all the components, all of the representations, both visually and in interactive, uh, you know, uh, implemented code, as well as how you should be using that, whether it's in plain HTML or React or whatever it is. And then they managed to uh, get their, their design system into abstract. And this is where they uh, work through and refine all of the elements that go into their Polaris design system. And for those of you who haven't seen it before, the abstract UI, uh, this is a project the Polaris web UI kit, and this is the master set of files. And you can see they have uh, sketch libraries, 
which uh, are a phenomenal uh, addition to the design toolkit. And with Abstract, you can actually uh, version all of your library files and share them across projects as well as within projects. So they have set this up uh, so that these files can be accessed and pulled from any other project. The uh, table of contents, the typography, the color palette, all of these things are in here. Uh, settings for titles and text. All of this also gets piped into their actual uh, documentation site. And so you can see over here the example of an actual date range. Um, Nathan, if you're here, I avoided the date picker and, and the color picker just so you didn't freak out. Um, but then they also obviously have their code uh, in GitHub. And this is something that's uh, really interesting to us at Abstract. We are looking at how we can bring these two things together, where we can begin to have the design data pushing and pulling from the two systems, the visual representation and the coded expression. Uh, another great company, Thumbtack, uh, Aaron Bailey, uh, who leads the design system team over there, uh, shared with me recently how his team manages these projects. And it's kind of fascinating. They have a private project where the design system team works and they are constantly taking input from other folks about new elements and components that should be up for uh, consideration to be added. They do a lot of work in there to make sure that the system's robust. Then they have an actual design. Here we go. So here's the private design system. And then they have Thumbprint, which is their actual, like, available to all designers design system. And the Thumbprint uh, project actually consumes the files from their private design system. So there's kind of a two-stage approach that they took to this. And uh, you can see here's some of the branches that they're working on. So. One thing that's really fun as uh, you know, a stakeholder who's kind of wondering what's going on with the work is I can pop in here and I can see that the global nav and footer are being worked on by Aaron, the grid toolkit modals uh, are both being worked on by Joe, and the new email stuff was John, but it hasn't been touched in a month. And I didn't have to ask anybody about that. I didn't have to go digging through a bunch of folders to find that out. I actually had it just presented to me uh, in the interface of the product by virtue of the way that it works. Um, this is how they've organized their file, uh, kind of system for sharing within the whole project. Um, they use a lot of emojis, which is kind of excellent. And it, it gets consumed again by the other uh, file. So real quickly, I'm getting close on time, so I'm going to run through Layer really quickly. Layer's a uh, pretty awesome company. They're working on building conversational UI for, for effectively uh, commerce. Uh, a lot of companies like Nordstrom's, uh, Trunk Club, a bunch of other uh, folks have used them. They spent two years building out a design system that they can then share with their uh, customers in order to basically bootstrap the experience. Um, and I remember earlier today, Nathan was talking about the themers. And so in a lot of ways, uh, the customers of, of Layer end up being the themers. And what they've done is they've created this giant toolkit. Uh, it's a sketch uh, file and library. It all lives within Abstract. With uh, the linked libraries feature, they're able to then create a brand new private project for each one of their customers and use the design system through the linked libraries. Um, it's basically made it super efficient and really, really um, an easy way for them to onboard customers. Uh, John Maida was recently talking about conversational design, and Ron gave a big shout out, which I thought was pretty fun. Um, this is what their system looks like. They broke it down to kind of core components, atoms, icons, molecules. They definitely take more of the uh, atomic design approach as well. I am almost out of time. I want to wrap up by just saying that the cultural implications of adopting a version control workflow are massive. I think we've seen it with engineering. Uh, the respect and the kind of accountability that is provided by having this type of system of record uh, has been one of the key factors that allows engineering to be such a critical um, and influential part of any company, uh, at least any technology-powered company. And I believe that for design to really kind of take the next step, uh, it's clear that the investment has been made and is continuing to be made into design. But 
it, in order for us to really kind of take that next leap, I believe that a workflow and a system like this, uh, whether it's abstract or not, it, it is that notion of a permanent system of record that allows other people to observe the workflow and the process and really start to understand how design is practiced that's gonna be critical in uh, the coming years. And with that, thank you.